My name is Chris Gethin, and what I aim to bring to you is inspiration, motivation from clients, everything that will allow you to evolve as a human being. What's up, Mr. Wes Watson? Oh, I am out of focus there. Big Chris, what's up, bro? How you doing? Hey, good to see you, my man. Thank you for uh, giving us the time here today. I'm really looking forward to this. Always love it. This is what we do. This is the this is this is how we get where we're going. Is the mindset. This is going to just be a bit of a chinwag with you and I, a bit of a chat, but obviously of value to the people that are listening in. And, I, you know, I don't blow smoke up anyone's ass, but you got a lot of value to provide. I love listening to the interviews. I love listening to like a webinar that was published a couple of weeks ago because there's so many bombs in there that are quotes that you can kind of drag from it and apply to your day. And I think there's a lot of, a lot of nuggets in here with my demographic that has some similarity to your demographic that will get a lot of value from this, including myself, you know, selfishly, I want to get value from this myself. So give people a little bit of a backstory of who you are, who you were, and where you are going and what value that you feel that you've got from your sacrifices in order to provide success into your life and to others right now. So Wes Watson, please take the stage, my man. So uh, Wes Watson, famous for my YouTube channel that started out, it's GP Penitentiary Life with Wes Watson on YouTube. We have like 70 million views. That's what first got me going was my Instagram and my YouTube. Why is the YouTube so successful, so valuable? Because it's me sharing the wisdom I gained from 10 years of pure pain during incarceration. So I was in the California prison system for 10 years. And during that time, you face yourself a million times over. Being incarcerated for that long is going to make or break a motherfucker. And a lot of people are broken. People send me pics all the time. Hey, or they tell me all the time, hey, Wes, my boy did 10 years. And I say, send me his photos. Let me see his pictures. And they're like, wait, what do you mean? Send me his pictures. They don't get what I'm getting at. I can tell how you did your time on the streets, in the penitentiary, in life, by looking at you, by sensing you, your energy, your presence. Are you really sticking to that path? Are you really sticking to that vision coming from above? Because nobody's vision was to wake up fatter, broker, less disciplined, and all these things that everyone is out here. That's just when you don't adhere to anything other than your selfish desires. But me, really, I follow my direct vision of my 10.0 life. And by creating our best self, that is how we best affect other people. Because there's too many guys out here saying stuff about discipline on stage with titties. Like I see jiggly ass motivational speakers on stage, not in shape at all, talking about discipline. And I'm not wondering, I'm wondering if, anyone's connecting this it it freaks me out someone just texted me right now they're like a pro surfer and they're like here's my old coach i'm like why they're like oh he runs a iron fisted program and i sent them back a picture of him and i said this guy the guy with the no six pack who's not in shape runs a iron fisted program oh just with you guys not with themselves that's what i'm trying to change is I came out to be the man I needed, the man who won't break his word for nothing, the man who lives up to everything that he, he knows he's being called to embody at all times. And it's really just about that, Chris. I had a vision, and I don't give a fuck what it takes to bring that into fruition. We've done a lot already, but we're just getting started. And that's what I want to tell people. Your vision is not up for debate. That is actually your path. That is actually your path in this life is to follow that grand vision for yourself. And then throughout that process of creating that grand vision, you're healing. You're healing all these weaknesses within you. So after you've completed a lot of this path, you have so much wisdom by healing so much in you that you're supposed to teach others to do the same. So that's why I tell people their life's purpose is to create the man they admire in every way and then give that man to the world. I like that. And, 
you know, one thing that I will mention is that, yeah, I know that you live this life yourself. I remember a couple of years ago when I was in San Diego and I reached out to you and I said, how about getting in a workout? And you're like, yeah, no worries. I'll be at your hotel at 3 a.m. And I was like, holy shit. OK, we're getting this going on, you know. And I believe what you said then is that you're trying to encourage your people to get up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. So you would be doing yourself a disservice if you weren't doing something harder on yourself in order to translate with authenticity to others. And I get that because I always say myself, knowledge without mileage is bullshit. You've got to put in that mileage yourself in order to pass on that knowledge with authenticity. I get that. Now, while you were uh, 10 years in a, in a state penitentiary, you were obviously locked up externally. But I feel during that time, you had, um, you know, during that imprisonment, you had freed yourself mentally. And now, after your re release, your purpose has been, and very successfully in doing so, is releasing millions of people from their self-imposed imprisonment. Would I get that correct? And how do you unlock those keys to people's imprisonment? Oh, it's simple. I, I really saw it very simply that since the dawn of time, the path to self-discovery was the same. Since the dawn of time, I stumbled upon it in prison. And then I'm like, oh, I'm doing what they used to do. So these prophets, these people thousands of years ago, to find themselves, to find God, to seek the answers of the universe, they went on long treks of long enduring treks testing themselves they fasted and they sought solitude so that's what my program is i didn't realize i was doing that in prison we were eating very little we're in a deficit and then i imposed even more of a deficit to where i'm suffering i'm barely getting those needs met of my macro my macronutrient needs met in prison but still having positive self talk still being grateful. And then um, the in the morning, getting up at 2.45, that would be my solitude, my reflection period, where I would sit with myself. And everybody wants to like reflect on what they're grateful for in the morning. I don't do that, because that's very obvious to me. Why am I gonna be like, I'm grateful for grandma and daddy and nani and mommy and poppy. I'm not gonna fucking do that. I'm gonna reflect on what I regret from the day before. I want streamlined focus on what I need to change so that I can be good for Nani and Poppy and mommy and daddy. But motherfuckers do that really. They don't even really focus on what they're fucking up on. They're like my cat, my dog, my brother. It's like, no shit. You really have to tell yourself you're grateful for these people? What the fuck are we wasting time for? Let's go into how you're a fucking liability to them. So I'll wake up in the morning and I'll be like, man, when I was doing dishes last night in the kitchen, when my stepsons and my wife were in the living room watching TV, I was being a real piece of shit. I didn't say anything to them, but my thoughts were negative about why the fuck am I doing the dishes? I work 15 hours a day. And my energy to them was negative. So these are the things I work on is being congruent at all times, aligned. So I'm, I'm keeping my thoughts and my energy aligned with the outcome I want. I want them, them to, to know I love them and I want them to be comfortable. So I'm making sure I'm sending congruent energy and thoughts at all times in my life. And this is like the main aspect behind the inner engineering that I do all day. I always tell people all external work is truly internal work. So even in the penitentiary, I really wasn't doing the time per se because I'm an observer. So I had a program that kept me locked into these motions. But since I had that program that was non-negotiable, had me locked into my daily steps, I was able to step back and observe myself from a third party view. And now I'm my greatest advocate. Now I'm watching a movie unfold. Now I'm writing a story. Now I'm not a victim. Got it. Interesting. So, of course, so when you wake up in the morning before you get to the gym, you have your routine of reflection, I guess, from the night before. Are you journaling and writing this down or are you just making mental notes on how to apply yourself on that day, knowing that how you do so will dictate tomorrow's reflections? So both, both, both basically, but 
I'm reflecting on what I regret so I can get aim for the day of what I can't do today. So if a fat person's like, fuck, I, I ate that half box of cereal before bed. And that's their regret from the day before. Regret's your guideline of what you need to remove. People think they can choose what they regret or not. No, what you did wrong is out of alignment with your purpose and your plan. So you can't choose to regret it or not. So regret is your guideline what needs to be removed. So the next morning I was regretting the energy I gave. So today my goal would be to control my energy and my subconscious thoughts during inconveniences. So when I'm inconvenienced, I still want my thoughts and energy aligned with being this rare man that I'm trying to create. So really it's that. And then the main focus when I'm writing in the morning, it's with the intent to distribute. So I believe in the morning you're sitting at the table, the proverbial table, which is you sitting down with infinite intelligence, God, creation, the universe. So I'm sitting at the table. I'm just listening. I'm removing Wes Watson. He doesn't exist. I'm just some energy. And I'm bringing in these downloads that I have to package for the world's consumption. So every morning I sit at the table with infinite intelligence. I receive a download and I distribute it to the world. So I distribute it to the world, not purely through text, but I post online knowing I'm giving it to tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people, but I also mentally am sending it. I'm sending out love and pure energy and willpower and strength. I'm releasing what I wish to possess throughout the day. And I'm releasing what I wish to possess throughout the day into the collective whole. So there's a space where we all exist, where we all actually fucking, we all actually exist on this other plane where we're a collective consciousness, where separateness is an illusion. And I'm speaking to people on this plane. That's why a lot of people say, I hear your voice in my head. I hear your voice in my head. Well, I always hear your words in my head. When you hear someone's words in your head all the time, it's because they speak to the collective whole. They speak on a plane of existence that's not purely censored. So some people just write a post and you read their post. It doesn't really do much. But someone who understands how the universe works, they understand that we're all connected. No no space between me and Chris right now that I can say something so powerful that he could get the chills and it can move him. I can push him. Then this is the people that know they can speak directly to millions of people at once and push them. So Steiner, Rudolf Steiner, one of the people I read from, he, he talks about um, the highest of beings, the highest of, of created individuals, the highest of cosmic beings, they don't know their existence. They only know they exist by what they transmute. And so us as humans, we're elevating towards this level where we drop our ego and we just push others in the right direction. So that's where I feel I'm headed is to no longer even have a desire as Wes Watson and only desire to be of service and value to others. Now, people get this all mixed up and they're like, what do you mean you don't have any desires? Like, yeah, we still have small desires and things, but they don't own us. All you motherfuckers out there who see like some cars and some money and some stuff, you're, you're snitching yourself out by pointing at the stuff. Because the real people who have that stuff are detached from it. Like true detachment means not that you don't own stuff. It means stuff doesn't own you. And when you only see the stuff, it owns you. People on my page don't see the stuff unless they're new and they're not woke. The people who've been on my page, they're like, man, your energy, man, your character. I watched you never fail. I stepped out of that prison four years ago and never missed. And it wasn't for me. It was because I needed a man in my life who never broke his word. And that's what I'm going to be the rest of my life. A man who never breaks his word. Yeah, and it's an ever evolving will, uh, word with you as well, Wes. You know, I'm, I'm just saying this from looking from the outside in. When I met you, uh, you know, over a couple of years ago, you'd obviously only been out uh, of prison a couple of years ago. But from what I could see, you definitely had a good grasp on what you wanted in life, what you were putting out, and you definitely had success. I could see that. But when I uh, saw you just a couple of weeks ago, I could really see a change in yourself, an evolution. You've become even more precise 
with your messaging. And there's the there's the goosebumps. Give me the again. chills, man. Give me the chills, yeah. brother. Awesome. And you look good. Like you look healthier. I'm not saying that you didn't look healthy before, but you look healthier. That your purpose is driving this passion that is glowing from you now. Do you feel that your message is being so precise now? It's starting to get heard by not so many more, but the right people that need the messaging by you. Well, I, I really try to teach people that we can vibrate above everything that ails us. So everybody doesn't get why they have limiting beliefs. They have limiting beliefs because they operate from Chris and they operate from Wes. So Chris and Wes have learned all these things that are incorrect their whole life. So that's what our limiting beliefs are attached to. You ain't good enough. You can't be a fucking billionaire. Like all these things that you learned your whole life as Chris and Wes are what are limiting you. So I know when we get into flow state during a workout and when we're fucking really in the zone, we're vibing so high, there's no limitations. Everything is possible. And so by, by raising way above this frequency, our lower frequency, our lower self, this is how we can actually vibrate above and be on a higher frequency than all the limitations that we know as Wes and Chris. So I even do that when I'm sick. Like people are like, don't work out when you're sick. I'm like, no, 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 I do that on purpose. So I walk in knowing I'm sick and I don't feel good, I'm Wes Watson. And then I'm 20 minutes into a crazy workout, just testing my soul. The mind and the body broke a while ago. Like my mind knew I was sick, my body knew I was weak, but I kept going till the spirit took over. Now I'm vibing so high, I'm not sick anymore. Nothing can stop me, I'm winning, like nothing can crush me. My thoughts are so pure, so positive, actions so aligned that nothing is hindering me. Then I come back down, my frequency drops and I'm Wes Watson again. And I'm like, oh, okay, I feel sick again. But I know, and all the old advocates said we would only cure disease through energy, frequency and vibration, thus elevating ourselves higher than what we know. Because what we know is the problem. We know when we're sick, we're supposed to be tired, we're supposed to take it out, we're supposed to be broken. And, but if we elevate above it long enough throughout our lives, and we live in flow state long enough throughout our days, we'll actually be more impervious to aging and stressors that cause cancers and all this shit. So I looked better only because I lived in flow state more greatly through the duration of each day over those years that, that you saw me. So people, if they learn to live in flow state, they're not crushing themselves with negative thoughts. Like negative thoughts turn into the diseases. Like negative thoughts turn into Alzheimer's. They turn into all these fucking, these uh, mild mental illnesses so anxiety, depression, um, obsessive compulsive disorders, these, Carl Jung said, these are a byproduct of pain avoidance. So going deep into pain is what elevates us above everything. Being down here and knowing our limitations as Chris and Wes is what keeps us believing in everything that ails us. So these be, everyone's avoiding pain so much that they're causing these mild mental illnesses that are a byproduct of pain avoidance. And you can see how it happens in them. They're not facing shit. So they're so weak, their own thoughts are a deterrent to them. Their own thoughts are detrimental because they're that weak. They don't face shit. So my whole life is about what's hardest, do it. Like, oh, that's the hardest thing, do it. I will wait till the end of my day right now. I will make sure I have so many calls booked, so much on my plate that I can't do the last thing, that I can't do it. And I'm like, perfect, I can't do this. Here's my test. And then I show up anyways, my throat's cracking, I'm beat, I'm drained. And I show up selflessly for that last person. And then I realize that I have endless energy in the tank because the spirit took over. Let the mind and body break and then let the spirit take over. Everyone's operating from a lot of weak limitations that really they just learned throughout their life by being around weak motherfuckers. And people like me and you are going to break that by showing them it's possible. I love that. And one of the people, you know, whilst you were just talking about that, you know, pushing yourself to that limitation and then still showing up reminds me of Henry Rollins. Like I've read all of Henry Rollins' uh, books and I love the mentality where he would look at the dates of the tour that he's got for the year coming up. And he's like, whoa, 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 hold on. There's two free days there. Fill them. They need yeah. to be filled. You know, he always says, if I think too much, it makes me think too much. I need to work. I need to condition my resolve. 
And one thing that you mentioned about, you know, that, that perception where people say, okay, I'm sick, I'm ill, when maybe they're not really, they aren't living in denial enough. Maybe they're just seeking comfort too much. And one thing that came to mind there, which is your suggestion of this book that I've actually just finished, is for not I've only had it two days, three days. I think a monster. He, um, he's so, so powerful. Absolutely amazing. Where he said the people in the concentration camp as soon as they're given up, they're given up that purpose, you can almost calculate to the hour where they would they would die, of course. But they had to base, you know, he spoke to a couple of people, said, hey, only you can write this book. Only you can do the 12 chapters to write this book. You have a purpose to serve the world. And guess what? That person lived. And then the next person, because of that purpose, and they wouldn't allow themselves to give up you know, even though they're dealing with disease, they're dealing with virus, they're dealing with malnutrition, it is the purpose and the desire within that person that gives them the purpose to not give up. And I think that's what, you know, you do absolutely amazing, but there's a lot of people that just don't understand it. Now, so they're selfish. They, they break for their own selfishness. That's what keeps them weak. That's what keeps them not crushing goals. It's because they're selfish. They're, I deserve this. I want this. I... I was in my cell and I was writing a letter and I realized the letter was just filled with, I'm hurting. I'm, I'm, I've been in, I've been on lockdown for a year at this point. I don't have anything. We're starving. I can't even believe this is happening. And I just looked at the letter. I'm like, who the fuck would want to read this? And I, no wonder no one was writing me back at that point. I crumbled the letter up and I just said, and right there, I just noticed what the fuck life was about. And I wrote the person, how are you doing? Are you good? Like, what's going on in your life? I'm fine. And then I started to really realize that at the very bottom, if you can give what you wish to possess, you complete that circle. Everyone is literally, they're, they're, they're literally releasing something they don't wish to possess. So they're releasing negativity, releasing fear, releasing scarcity. And it's just a circle coming back to them. I always break any negative pattern with positive action. So people always think they can think their way into acting. And that's why everyone's so fucking stupid. You have to act your way into positive thinking. And then and act positive, you act your way into positive thinking. And then another action, positive. Another action, positive thought. Another action, positive thought. Now you have positive action on top of positive self-talk over and over till you raise your frequency so high that your frequency is what you frequently see. High frequency people see everything possible. They see how it's going to work. They see how they're killing it. Low frequency people only see how they're never going to make it. It's not going to work. So you have to avoid, you have to look at life in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration because you have to avoid low frequency like it's the plague. That's why you self-sabotage. Low frequency Chris will always self-sabotage. High frequency Chris won't. When you start going low frequency, you have to immediately raise yourself. How do you raise yourself? Positive action and a positive thought works every time. But there's like a checklist. People, a lot of coaches will just talk about actions. Like your actions, your actions, your actions. Fuck that. I go to the root. When your energy starts slipping, you know the negative thoughts are coming next. Then after the negative thoughts, the negative actions are coming. So you have a warning way before. Second, your energy starts slipping. You have to address it. So a true man that's woke is responsible to his internal state 24-7, always taking inventory. Yeah. And, and you see that all the time when, for instance, let's say someone goes through a transformation or someone gets ready for a bodybuilding show. And then straight after the show, they go and gorge. And then they see in a couple of days time, their abs have gone. So they feel bad about themselves and they go and emotionally eat even more. And then they cross into that abyss because there's just these negative thoughts that are compiled then with these negative actions. And, you know, basically they've gone into that yo-yo or that quote unquote. Yeah, the, mind, the, mind, the mind only knows addition and multiplication. So if you're negative, the negativity just grows. If you're positive, the positivity just grows. There's no subtracting it. There's either fully erasing the negativity with positive action or fully just starting your day off positive and not fucking stop it. So, I mean, they're all, it's a reward system. If everyone lived like this simple, they did something and said, how do I feel from it? And then did it again if it felt good, like long-term and immediate, 
And then if they didn't feel it, didn't have a long-term good result about it, immediate or whatever, then they would remove it. So then everyone wouldn't be overeating. They wouldn't be drinking. They wouldn't be doing any of this shit. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't fucking eat outside of my diet. I don't do any of that shit because I know this is a key to self-mastery, what we ingest. The true key to self-mastery is through what we ingest. If you looked up the definition of self-mastery and then went like three steps down Google and clicked it, it would say, how do you master self? It would just talk about food. It would talk about daily habits, like something to do daily. And it would talk about exercise. And still no one is connecting this. All these intellectuals are trying to read their way into self-mastery. You motherfucker, discomfort needs to be your comfort zone. Your comfortable reading. Go do the motherfucking burpees. The growth you're looking for is on the other side of the work you're not doing, motherfucker. That's it. I love that. I love that. And that, that's you know, one of the reasons why I like to sign up to things that I think that I'll suck at. You know, like, uh, you know, I didn't, you know, start competing in ultra marathon or Ironman or anything like that or bodybuilding thinking that I was going to be any good at it in the beginning. You know, because you get a lot of people saying, well, you're too big. You haven't got the right shape or whatever it is. You know, you, you've got asthma. It can't be done. Well, of course. Well, if you sign up for something that you suck at and you turn that weakness into a weapon, then That's all of a sudden it. you have that transcendence effect That's that you it. know, That's okay, now I'm going to do shit on the days that I don't want to do them and get it done. That's it. I always tell people laser focus on your weakness to level up. When everybody out here standing on their strengths, ruining their life, you got the millionaires that got titties. Come on, motherfucker. You're going to ruin your whole life being super rich and successful and having a horrible body. What are you gonna go get that super hot chick who just wants your money? And then you're just gonna be like, what the fuck happened? She only wanted, I have snakes around me. No, you don't have snakes around you, stupid. You validated yourself with your money. So the people came, people want from you what you validate yourself with. So if you validate yourself with your money, you better believe they're coming for that. If you validate yourself with your character, your work ethic, your fucking habits, they will want that from you. And so that's how you create a harmonious relationship. They're going to, when you're willing to give to someone what they want from you, these people validate themselves with their money. They don't want to give it. Now they have a fucked up relationship. They're like, Why do they just want my money? Because that's all you show them. You're not showing them. You could totally have money and show them the work ethic to got it. Like the day we drove away in the Lambo, you wrote under the post, you said, this looks like success, but this is sacrifice. And that's what we need to teach our kids. We don't need to give them everything we never had. We need to teach them everything we never knew. I was on a podcast the other day and the guy said, what would you tell your 18 year old son, your son when he's 18? And I just said, I look him in the eyes and say, anything that I wasn't be that for your children. You know, Like just, that's what it's about. Breaking the cycles. Like, how many fat parents raise fat kids? Do they even understand that at like 11, I was a chunky little fuck and it ruined, it was more painful being a chunky little 11 year old than going to prison for 10 years. 10 years in prison was nothing compared to being 11 to 13 and chunky. Like every second, just hating your body. Oh, like having little slight titties and a, and a fucking spare tire. I wasn't crazy fat, hated my body though. Pale, tits, a big old gut, wasn't super fat. So these parents who are trashing their kids by not knowing how to feed their kids the correct macronutrients because they're fat, they're undereducated, they're complete selfish pieces of shit because there's fucking knowledge out here for you not to send your kid down the fucking shitty painful path that you've lived your whole life. That is your job as a parent, to notice the areas in your life that caused you pain and never pass that on. The fucking dad who knows his drinking causes him pain and has his daughter go fetching beers from the fridge. That motherfucker should be hitting the side of the head with a bat. It'll probably save him a lot of pain that he's going to feel later when she's a stripper. But these motherfuckers are so stupid, they don't get it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. They need to wake up. They need to wake up before it's too late. And guess what? The truth will wake a motherfucker up. Yeah, no doubt. Now, you know, you mentioned that, you know, you, you set, you know, you try to get your clients to set themselves positive intentions for the day. 
Now, what does that routine look for you, Wes? Like, do you wake up in the morning and you read books or you read quotes and you apply that quote to your day? And do you like wake up with a phone or do you wake up with a book? Are you reactive or, you know, is there action purpose? Yeah, I really, I really try to not be Wes. I try to have nothing really engage with me. And I just wake up, I make my, I have my supplements to go to the gym and I just tap into the source. I don't really read no more. I really, I, why, why go to a, why go to get a cut version when you could go to the plug? So I go straight to the plug. I, I go straight where if a man writes something and it seems wise, it came from above and he deciphered it. I don't really want his, I don't really want to read his secondhand deciphered version. I want to go straight to the plug, go straight to creation. And so I just wake up and I just, I'm, I, I show my gratitude by getting up at 245. I'm sending out a signal to the universe. How can I be better today? How can I be my best today for everybody? I'll do anything. And I'm all your actions, all your thoughts, all energy you exude is an offering. Most people don't realize that their intentions are shit. I don't give a fuck if you go to the gym every day and you're jacked. If your intentions are to fuck bitches and kick ass. If your intentions are to whoop dudes asses and fuck bitches, then you just turn working out into a massive problem, a massive vice. But if your intentions are to go to the gym and create the positive mindset, the rate of vibration that people can feel, create and the byproduct being the body that they would they see so they want to listen to you you're an upgraded version of what they currently are so they will take your advice like are you everything i do is for everyone else at a certain point i don't even get anything out of anything i do unless i do it for someone else i what i'm gonna look any different going to the gym each day no i go for how i feel and then I show up and when I feel better, then I want to be on camera. I want to give my wisdom. Like most people with most people's greatest source of pain that are successful in life is that they don't teach enough. Like they're being notified inside in their heart. Like, hey, motherfucker, like, are you going to give anyone any of your fucking wisdom? Like if you read a bunch of books, you better fucking write one. If you watched a bunch of YouTube channels, you better fucking make one. Like what the fuck, you know? A lot of people think the humble guy is the guy who doesn't show his success, who doesn't show his abs. That guy, the guy who doesn't show you his success is doing it for a reason. He doesn't want you to ask him. He has no fucking time for you. So he's not humble at all. He actually doesn't want to teach you how he healed himself. But the guy who drives up in the Rolls Royce, who's showing his muscles, who's putting it online, who has time for you. He is humble. He puts himself out there for you to say, hey, how'd you do that? And then he's got all the time in the world for you. Find one of these rich guys in the elevator in my building. They won't tell you how they made, if they know that you know they have money, they would be so fearful that you might ask them something or want something from them. The guys who hide their money are the least humble, the least. They don't want to give you their most valuable asset, their time and their energy. They're fucking assholes. They don't want to give you anything. They want you to stay away from them. And real simple people just understand stuff on how it affects them. So when they see someone's success, it kind of hurts them, makes them uncomfortable. And they haven't linked discomfort with growth. So they're like, oh, fuck that person's shit. They react wrong. When in all reality, that person is flying a flag. They're like, hey, I know how to solve your financial problems. I'm over here. Do you want to learn? I'll teach you. I'll give you all my time. Your $3,000 doesn't mean shit to me. I've had people sign up for my program for $7,500 for my business coaching and make $50,000 the first month. So now they still have two months left with me and they're, they're $42,500 $42, profit and they have this skill the rest of their life. Like I give people better fucking better returns than Bitcoin, real estate, anything on the planet by teaching them how to be an online coach. But still a dumb motherfucking idiot who's insecure will be like, fuck your Rolls Royce. I'm like, dude, it doesn't matter if you want a Rolls Royce or not. Do you, if you want to feed every puppy dog on the fucking planet, then you could do that with your money. 
Do you want me to teach you how to make money so you can feed every dog on the planet? Like, what is your, what, what are you going to spend it on? What are you going to do to help? I know, I personally know that by creating the individual that I would watch and I would look at, I'm changing the old me, which is the worst person on the planet. The superficial person that'll do anything for money, they'll fucking shoot you, they'll rob you, they'll take all your shit. They want a motherfucking Rolls Royce. You know, they want money, they want life. And by me showing these people, I have this stuff, I did it positively. I'm actually working on the people that need help the most. So I'm drawing them in and then showing them there's a better way because they'll listen to me. They ain't going to listen to the guy with the Casio watch and the fucking cardigan on talking about save all your money. Da, da, da. It's, he's, they're not going to listen to him. And I'm telling him, hey, you have to be a great person. If a man is right, his world will be right. You have to help people to bring all this towards you. So, you know, what I love about, you know, what you just mentioned now, you know, this higher purpose, this higher power that you try to pull from people. And obviously, I, you know, you people would look at you initially, you're, just, you're freaking jacked, you got the tattoos, you've got, the, you know, the beautiful cars, you got four, well, you got two rollers, two Lambos now. People see, like you've mentioned before, a reflection of what they want to see in themselves. Now, like you said, maybe they don't want the cars, maybe they don't want all the tats, but there's something that they can gain from the success that you've been able to gain yourself and put out there to the world. Now, who are the people that you generally attract? Because let's say face value, I, I go onto your YouTube channel all the time. By the way, you need to have some voice recordings specifically for the gym, because I listen to that sometimes in the gym and it just gets me going and I love it. And I don't always, I don't listen to music much in the gym, but I like listening to that. But if people were to go to your YouTube channel based on the initiation that they see, they just might see you just shouting and hollering. But if they listen clearly, there are some absolute gems of messages that really digs deep in people. Who are the people that mostly come to you? Because I've seen the testimonials on your websites. Again, you've got people that have gone through an amazing transformation, but they're tattooed up. They look like a lot of people that have actually come out of jail themselves and you're putting them on the right track. So is it these people that you're targeting or is there any particular demographic that you do? No, I just, I just put out. So what, what a lot of people do wrong is they try to create content. I really just deliver messages. So, I mean, the thing is someone, instead of just teaching people life and being a valuable person online, people are like, okay, this is what I'm teaching. But that's a problem. If you make a video about relationships, then someone's gonna watch it and be like, I need help the same way you solve that problem. Or if you make a video about losing weight, they'll, they'll say, I need help the same way you dropped it. So if you make an array of different content, that hits different people, then everybody's gonna really just a la carte hear some content and say, oh, that makes sense, teach me that. So instead of saying, I'm just a fitness and nutrition coach, like you just share your thoughts, your beliefs, your experiences and everything you've overcome. People listen and they're like, teach me to overcome it like you did. So I've overcome so much stuff in my life. I, I'm teaching people. I have some of the most famous people on the planet on my program, like people I wouldn't even name on here because I don't even feel right naming them, but they would, everyone knows who they are, like the most famous people by far. And a lot of them had no discipline. And they watched me for two years, three years. And they said, you are by far the most disciplined person I've ever seen. I've never seen you miss. I watch you every morning. You've never missed. I need that. So everyone will see something and be like, I need that. And then, you know, just by delivering different, such an array of different content, then you're, you're getting different demographics due to the content. But I mean, from the most famous people to people fresh out of jail, to just normal dads who want to be better. I mean, it's everybody. It's, I have, I have, so we signed 7,000 people last year. So, I mean, you basically pretty much hit everyone with that, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I know, you know, we, we spoke a couple of weeks ago about who some of those famous people are. 
And what I love, you know, again, about our workouts that we got together, when we get together, it's not like, okay, we're going to hit chest today, we're going to hit shoulders, that's a byproduct, but it's the vibrations that we gain, that I definitely gain from you from our conversations during that time that I feel, okay, over the physical strength, I am working my soul muscles more. I'm getting these mental stimulation that is very powerful that we can, you know, apply to ourselves and further, like you said, spread that word because it's definitely a body space of knowledge that we're trying to put out there. And it's a crowd space. We can't just do it ourselves. We rely on other people to push that messaging out there. Now, the one thing that I want to ask here is, you know, what do you feel is your kryptonite that separates you from a lot of people that we see in the industry? Is it because you've gone through the hardship of, you know, you, you, you were on the streets, uh, you know, it obviously got you into jail for like 10 years and you went through a lot of sacrifice, self-preservation to put yourself out there, a very, very different and contrasting person to what we're used to seeing. You know, what is it that you feel is that kryptonite that makes you so powerful? Because I really gave up everything for them. I, I really gave up all desires and documented it for them. Like I won't sleep anymore in anymore for them. I, I'll stay looking a certain way year round for them. I won't miss a post for them. Like I, everything I do is outward and that's my intention. I want to be that man for the world that I always needed. The one that never broke his word for nothing. So I've never missed a YouTube upload. I've never missed an Instagram upload. And why is that important? That's important because when I was going through my hardest times in prison, those quotes that I used to read, those books, all the teachings that I'm giving people, that's what got me through each hour. I know there's someone out there going through a breakup, a divorce. They're hungover right now. They're, having, they're going through some drug addictions. They're facing something, some form of adversity that... Even my 10 minute video on YouTube gives them 10 minutes of clarity. They're like, at least I didn't sit there and destroy myself for those 10 minutes Wes was on screen. Like it gave me some clarity. So being able to give people that moment each day, it means a lot to them. Cause I've had the times in prison in my cell where I thought this is how my life was gonna go. I would just sit in my cell. One time I was on lockdown for 14 months and didn't get to leave my cell once, not for a shower, not nothing, because there was a large institutional riot between races. Didn't walk out of the cell once. So each, every day I would sit there and construct these imaginary eagles, these scenarios that were so bad, I would do it for the whole day till I finally wore myself out and passed out. I know there's so many people that are just plagued by their own mind that, I'm giving them that break. And as I teach them, I show them that they have the tools. They need nothing else other than themselves. They have the tools to combat this. And so I'm teaching people every day how to free themselves from themselves, from their inward reflection that's going bad on them. Everyone, everyone worries about themselves so much. Why do I feel this way? When am I going to get this? Me, 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 me. I they don't realize that their, their internal reflection that's constant is being punished. Like you should really have a process that just builds you in the morning and then the rest of the day you serve other people. When you're serving other people, you can't be worried about you. Like right now I've been in flow state this whole time. I can't be like my bills, my job. Oh, oh, what about this and this and that? Like that's what everybody's doing all the time because they're so self-absorbed. It's a punishment. They're being punished for their self-absorbed thoughts. Like I said, depressed people, they're just the most selfish people on the planet. They're so fucking selfish. You could play a depressed person self-talk out loud. They're self-talk. And it's all about them. Why do I feel this way? What's going on with me? Me, a uh, me, what about me? Me and me and me, me. If you didn't think about you so fucking much, you wouldn't be punishing yourself like that. Like literally. What if you had to work on other people? That's what I made my purpose. That every day I have to get up and deliver the best quality messages and individual to the world. That's why I say that's what our life purpose is. Every fucking day, all fucking day long, 
We are creating the individual we admire to give that person to the world. Now, everybody wants the, the chapter. They want to start on chapter 15. You've seen that picture where there's like one guy climbing a ladder and he's like eight rungs up. And the rungs are like this close. And then there's the other fucking ladder where the guy's under the last rung and it's way above his head. Like this is everybody. They think they're just going to jump to some high level. No, just start with an early wake up time and work out every day. Just get blood flow and then start tracking your macros. Trust me. You'll be like, man, this is crazy. It, so many fucking eight figure CEOs that don't even know what macros are. How the fuck don't you know what's on your plate? So you look down at your body and it's a shit bag fucking stack full of shit and you hate it. Like you look like shit and you, and you sit down this food in front of you. You never thought to say, does this plate of food serve me or doesn't it? How the fuck do you call yourself an intellectual if you're destroying every moment of your day by how shitty your body is? Like, oh, I look fat in this shirt. Oh, I wonder if they think I'm fat. Oh, shit, I feel fat. Like, look at that energy leak that a fat person has. All they're thinking about is if they look fat, if people think they're fat, do they look fat from this angle, that angle, this other one? All they're thinking about is that they're fat. I've been fat. That's all you think about. Oh, these pants make me look fat. Your shirt. When you're jacked, you don't have to think about all that. You wipe that whole slate clean. You're like, damn, I look good from every angle because I put the work in. And I put the fucking work in. These motherfuckers don't realize that if they just, anything that's so negative inside you is a punishment because you're doing it wrong. You can't choose to say, no, I enjoy being fat. You feel negative about your appearance because you're doing it wrong. You're living wrong. You're trashing this gift of a body you've been given. You're supposed to be proud of it. You're supposed to polish it, shave it, fucking have it just ready, just on point. Yeah, what people don't understand, it isn't just from the physicality. Of course, that physicality radiates in. You feel better. You've got more confidence. You're not as paranoid. You're not as self-conscious. But yeah. when you said, you know, like you said, you're looking at the macros, are they serving you or they, is it a deterrent? Because well, the one thing that I noticed more than anything, like I'm uneducated, I failed at school, I hated school, didn't want to be there any moment. It's only when I started taking care of my body, which then started taking care of my brain, where it started functioning as it should have, as it should have. Then I started retaining content. I started learning about training, nutrition, supplementation, went to college then. I was like, wow, shit, I can retain this. And the brain and the thoughts that I wanted are now serving me because why? The food is serving me. It's that's, serving that's, me. that's what I like to say is conscience congruent living turns confusion to clarity. So your conscience is telling you not to be fat. It's like, dude, you wake up in the morning, you look in the mirror like, I'm not going to break my diet today. I need to lose 10 pounds. That's God. That's creation. That's the universe, whatever you want to call it. That's our creator or whatever created us telling you that, hey, you need to do this. Your conscience is the authentic voice of God is what every culture says. They don't even know what, what our conscience really stems from, but it's coming from an alternate source that guides us. Conscience never lies. It's the only infallible thing about you. So you can't wake up and have it tell you, I need to drop 20 pounds today and then choose to gain five more eating some shit and think you're not going to be punished. You're not listening. So as soon as you walk in alignment with your conscience, everything becomes crystal clear, your path, your purpose, everything. So I tell people to just drop the vices first off, pick up an earlier wake up time, pick up a workout and uh, start tracking their macros and then reading something deep and reflecting and uh, really just, it's such a fucking benefit. Everything else keeps you in the dark. How the fuck are you going to eat three to five times a day or how many times normal people probably eat twice a day. How are you going to eat twice a day or something and not know what it's doing to you? Why would you not ask that question? Like this, I'm dumbfounded by people who don't like their body and they refuse to learn what they're eating, like, and fully know it. Like, it's not difficult at all. And once you know your macros, you can control your, you can control your confidence for life. You can say, okay, I'm confident right here. I'm not fully ripped and dieted, but I feel good right here. And I'm eating pretty good and I feel good. And yeah, I like this spot. 
until your conscience is like, ah, rip up again. You just constantly align with your conscience and it's telling you what to do at all times, all times. Yeah, yeah, you think about it, like what's most important to you? Is it your two rollers? Is it your two Lamborghinis? Or is it your body? Is yeah, but it that's what I tell people. Is people it your always, lifeline? But you people, know, most people, well, everybody knows whether their car takes diesel or whether it takes fuel, what is going to serve it or what isn't. However, like you said, the most important thing that they own, which is precious, their lifeline, their body, their carcass, they have no idea what fuel to put in there because they choose not to know. And they're, they're all liars. So this is what all these liars out there do. They see someone money and they say, it's not all about money. That makes me so fucking mad because I'm just like, you dumb motherfucker. You just snitched yourself out. You saw me get up every fucking day at 2.45 to better myself. I only saw you get up for money. Everybody only gets up to go to work. If they don't have to go to work that day, they sleep in. They would never get up on their day off to go do cardio and eat cleaner and write something for the world to fucking better themselves. You fucking liars. They're only about the money. But guess what they did? They sold out on their purpose and their vision for tiny amounts of it. It's one big punishment for choosing mediocrity. Everybody who does that, they sold out their vision. Above was giving them a, a guidance system. They're just like, fuck you. They didn't even fucking listen. And they're one, they don't realize that mediocrity is a punishment for the weak. Literally, they're so stupid. I never see normal people who say, it's not all about the money, Wes. I'm like, well, by watching your life, I can't tell what you're about at all. You ain't really doing anything seriously. Like you go to, the only thing they're committed to is a job they hate. Fucking idiots, dude. What the fuck are they doing? Oh, well, the only thing I'm really consistent with is this job I hate. Oh, that's great. I'm sure you've created, a, I'm sure you've habitually constructed a great mindset from that. Just 24 set. Just 12 hours or eight hours a day, every day. I hate this. I hate this. Let's see how little I can do. Let's see how little I can do. I hate this. I hate this. Yeah, that's why, that's not why you suck. That is exactly why everyone sucks. They're trying to do the least they can at a job they hate while they're talking to themselves like shit. And they're habitually constructing the lowest level motherfucker while people like me are saying more, more, more. I can do more. Yeah, the haters are always going to point the finger instead of pointing it at themselves. They always point it elsewhere, which definitely isn't going to serve them. And as you so rightfully mentioned, as soon as the quote unquote weekend comes, that's their justification. OK, now I'm going to sleep in. There's no such thing as weekend. I'm very much the same as you, Wes, where Saturday, Sunday, I'm waking up the same time with that consistency that is inbred within me. You know, that's a habitual nature that is going to serve yourself because I'm one of those people where life can be a white knuckle ride if I'm not extra tough on myself, extra. 100%, different. yeah. Like right. li literally all those small, all these small bouts of self-inflicted adversity are what are daily, this wake up time, this food you don't want to eat, these sacrifices you're making. These are small amounts of adversity you're self-inflicting to prepare yourself for when life is really going to be tough. Your mom's going to die. Your fucking, your fucking dog's going to die. Like shit's going to go down in your life. You've been so comfortable for so long that when that happens, you're fucked and you have no system to save yourself. Like what we have a system to run to. That's where people get destroyed. Something bad happens and they run straight to the vices because they don't know how to run to what builds them. They run to what breaks them down because they're used to just doing what's so easy. And so the biggest thing is, is where do you run during times of adversity, do you run to what builds you or do you run to what breaks you down? I run to what builds me. When time, when time gets tough, I diet harder because I need strength. Why do we, why do we live easier when we need strength? So like, say something bad happens. People choose to take their foot off the gas. No, no, you need to do more. You need more strength. And what is strength? Strength is built through restraint. So if you're desiring food, saying no gives you strength. If you're desiring alcohol, saying no gives you strength. You need strength. You just had a divorce, stupid. Don't drink and cave to that weakness. It's going to break you and bring you lower. You're going to dig a hole. Yeah. Now, like, you never always lived this life, Wes. You know, no. before, before you, locked, you locked up, 
like uh, you were partying, you were you were uh, doing drugs, smoking weed or whatever. Was it during your time in prison that you said no to all of this and you decided to change? Was that yeah. the tipping point? It was very easy for me to change because I just did everything the opposite. It's like, hey, what was I or what am I? I'm doing the exact opposite of everything I was in it. So, I mean, I mean, I, I did every drug in prison. Like I was smoking speed and drinking prison wine in prison. So, I mean, but that was the last time I relapsed, but I, I've really done every drug and I've overcome every drug. I've been at the very fucking bottom of everything. And now I'm worth eight figures plus annually sitting at the top of this penthouse. I knew I was coming back to San Diego, sitting on the yard in prison. I said, I'm coming back to San Diego. I have the best condo in San Diego, right on the bay, literally. And, and it took me four years after they let me out with 200 bucks. They let me out of that prison with $200. And I had to live at my grandma's house. I lived at my grandma's house and I fucking just was building my social media, building, 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 never taking a day off, never taking a day off, never had one sip of alcohol, never broke, never broke, never broke, never missed a post. They're all telling me, what the fuck are you doing? Like this, you just playing on your phone all day, you need to get a job. I'm like, chill, chill, chill. And then they didn't know once my coaching had blown up and I was sitting at my grandma's house with no bills making $150,000, $200,000 a month, not telling anybody. So I did this for like, for like three months. And I had saved like, I buy like, I didn't buy a car till I had $300,000 saved, you know? And so at this point I have fucking like 450 grand or something. I had bought a car and like my grandma's like, she's like, how the fuck did you like, even before this, even before that, she was like, my grandma was whining about a credit card she had. And I was like, hey, hand me that shit. Like, hand me that credit card. And she, I'm like, how much is it? And she's like, 11,000, like 900 or something. I called it in, I paid it off and I handed it to her. I said, grandma, I've been making like almost 200 grand a month for the last three months. I'm out. And I did, you know, and then, then I went and lived my life. But long, I just wanted to tell like the amount of sacrifice I did before I even lived flossy. I had 300 grand before I bought a car, moved out of my grandma's. Most of you motherfuckers would be at the club if you had a hundred grand popping bottles, buying a new whip and all that shit. Nah, not me. I, I had millions saved and invested into accounts that are making me a million plus annually before I bought any of the shit you see. And the best part about the shit you see of mine is I own my shit. I have the pink slips to my fucking cars. Look at 2020 Rolls Royce, 2019 Lamborghini. I got the new Lamborghini one coming and the other Rolls Royce one. The other Rolls is uh, financed. I just put 50,000 down. It was like 220. Wrote it off as a business expense. So I mean got rid of $250,000 for the taxes with 50,000 down and some payments. Sometimes that's a smarter thing, but back to where I changed was in prison. I looked around and I saw all these fake ass supposed tough guys, face tats, gang tats, blasted up. Yeah. Look at this bad motherfucker. And they were so pussy, so undisciplined, so weak. None of them are Jack. None of those dudes in prison are busting out veins everywhere with size. None. They're shot out. They're on drugs. They're barely making it. They're sweating their people on the street for fucking for drug money. And it just I saw how fucking flawed it was. And I'm like, I'm going to be the exact opposite of everything I hate from now on. So if a motherfucker slept in, I'm getting up. Everything I did, I flipped around to the extreme because guess what? I didn't want to have a plan B. I just had plan, fuck a plan B. I just had one plan and I knew if I did it better and more intensely with no deviation that I would outdo everybody. And the thing is, I didn't have to outdo them, like making money wise. Money was never part of my vision. I just wanted to be jacked as fuck, tatted as fuck, not using drugs, in control, really disciplined. That's all I wanted. And once I found that, I taught people that. And it's so fucking valuable to them because everybody's got this great life, but their lack of discipline is crushing their life. It's ruining their life. So were you helping people in prison much like oh, yeah. the way that you are now? So, you know, you, like you said, you wanted to be the exact opposite to like these gang quote unquote leaders were then you influencing them. And then the leaders started, uh, you know, basically looking at you towards it as being a leader. Yeah, some, some, some of the guys I'd pull aside or whatever, but by the time I'd been down so long that I went from like a level four yard to a three yard to a two yard. Now I'm at a two yard and I'm, I've been living a 
a detailed program for like six, seven years at this point, haven't broken my wake up. I'm like the, I'm the dude where at people look over at 3 a.m. and I'm reading my book every morning with my mat rolled up. I'm flawless. My timing's impeccable. I'm standing in front of the door for every movement. Nobody exited that door before me for over two years, not one time. I was the guy that not one time did he ever fall, ever miss. I've never missed. Ever since I chose not to miss, I never missed. Watch my Instagram every day, you guys. I'll never miss. I'll be there every day. And I would stand in front of the child, the door to go to child, to yard, to anything. I was always 30 minutes early. My cup in my pocket, my spoon, my toilet paper rolled up, just standing there. It meant so much to me to never miss that I found the secret. Make the small shit mean so much to you that it means more than the result. When the daily steps that get the result mean more than the result, you can't be stopped. Yeah, funny. I was just having this conversation with a client this morning who is thinking about six weeks, 16 weeks from now, wants to get ready for this video, do a, you know, get ready, you know, prepare for a movie, whatever. I was like, forget about that. Whatever you do today is going to dictate your tomorrow. And whatever you do tomorrow is going to dictate the following day. It's sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. If you put those words into applications every day with that discipline, guess what? 16 weeks is going to be there. You don't even have to think about it. It'll just show up and you'll be ready. You're, you're either paying for your choices three years ago or you're getting paid for your choices three years ago. That's it, simply put. That was from Bedros. He posted the other day. Bedros is a beast. But, um, dude, all this shit's so easy, but you're complex. These blueprints are so easy, but we're complex. The thing is, the man with a certain level of self-mastery, a high level of self-mastery, he'll be able to manifest anything he can visualize because he can do any blueprint. That's where all these fitness trainers and trainers and shit fuck all their clients up. This is how, this is how these business coaches fuck their business clients up. This is how these trainers fuck their clients up. They give them a blueprint, but they don't teach them how to live life. I give life advice so that you can do the goddamn blueprint. These motherfuckers throw a blueprint in front of you. They're like, do it. I teach you how to be a better you so you can do any blueprint. My guys need my program being able to do anything because they're in control. The biggest thing, like the craziest shit is, is that people don't realize that the key to all this is just discipline and self-mastery, but you have to teach them life. I always tell people, how are you going to be good at anything if you suck at being you? Like, you're not going to be, how are you going to do this? You suck at being you. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, you ain't going to be a good doctor. You're not going to be a good banker. You're not going to be a good coach, anything. You suck at being you. Like, how do you know I suck at being me? You don't hold your word to yourself. Like, you have a plan for you each day and you don't do it. You fucking suck at being you. Start there. When you're better at being you, you'll be able to do anything. I could be a fucking astronaut right now if I wanted to in five years. Because if that's what I really wanted to do, I would do it. I do everything that's in front of me. Because I, I gave you my word. And I gave my wife my word. And I looked at my son and I said, I let you down, dude. And I looked at everybody, everybody that supported me when I was in prison on Instagram, because I was on online and, and go on my Instagram. I was posting while I was in prison. I didn't even miss when I was in prison. I made the rack in prison look good because I was proud of myself. People are so crazy that they're so not proud of their life. They're so self-consumed that their content online sucks. They're like, oh, I don't like my video. The video is not about you, idiot. That's why you're fucking up your content. It's hard for you to make videos. The videos are for your viewers to be better. You're making about how you look and sound stupid. They're like, hey, coaching is not for me. No shit. <laughs> coaching is for them. What do you mean it's not for you? It takes a selfish individual to coach. You're selfish, bitch. And that's why you're not good at anything because you're fucking selfish. I'll give my life to my people. They're like, dude, are you sure it's cool for me to call you? Fucking call me, dude. If I can pick up right then, I got you. Like, I got clients going through relationship shit, life problems, 
I know their pain. I've lived all of it. And that's why I love curing people's pain. That's our job on this planet. To yeah. find your pain and what ailed you your whole life. Cure it. Teach others to do the same. Yeah, because I think people look at you and they think, okay, you're a trainer. It's all visual. What it isn't, it's all internal. All which, internal. Will, which will surface itself eventually as a byproduct. But Wes, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Yeah, I, I do. You got, you got, you got the happy. best energy, bro. You got the you got the calm, best energy. I've yeah. always been like erratic and pumped up like this. People are always like, you know, a lot, you know, with, with energy and stuff, the exchange. It takes a real honest person void of ego to not be affected. Like you got, you got the accent, you got the good energy. It's, it's pleasure. I'm more abrasive, but that's what I tell people. Don't let your ego be affected by someone's delivery. Mine or the next man's listen to the message. Exactly. Feel the message. Don't, don't think about how you how it makes you feel. Think about how it can benefit you. Cause there's a lot of teachers out there that people aren't listening to because they're actually void of being able to drop their own ego and how it affects them, how they feel about it. Yeah, much like when you have a coach that's talking to a team of football players, some people will take those words of encouragement or assertive words one way or the other. It all comes down to your perception and how bad you want to absorb that and utilize it as yourself uh, for yourself. 100%. But um, I always that those most winning basketball coaches are always the guys throwing the chairs across the fucking court. <laughs> but, I remember when I was racing motocross, my dad used to do that. If I was having a shit race, He'd, I remember one race, he picked up like a fence post and threw it at me. I was like, okay, I guess I'm having a shit race. That's, you know I mean? that's, that's what I know. You know, I, I came from prison. So they're in prison. It's non-negotiable. You're working out each day. You're getting up early. It's militant. And all that did was benefit my life more than you guys could ever imagine. Everyone out here, your comfort's killing you. Wake the fuck up. Yeah, exactly. Start getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Well, this has been a, a phenomenal conversation. Uh, uh, but number one, please do follow Wes Watson's YouTube channel. It is absolutely phenomenal. As he mentioned, he's posting on there all the time. And there's a lot of great bombs that you can listen to at any time, even in the gym. And where can people find you? Give us your YouTube channel, your Instagram, how people can contact okay, you. Uh, YouTube is GP Penitentiary Life with Wes Watson. And then my Spotify is just GP Penitentiary Life with Wes Watson. So the YouTube is actually on podcasts as well. And then my Instagram is um, Watson underscore fit. In all reality, you guys, like it's all about just dropping all the fucking desires that you know are keeping you from being your best self. Mitigating desire to let it create. Success is about trading the present for a better future. When people can finally realize that, they'll learn to fucking live in a more selfless manner. No doubt. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Wes. I really, really appreciate it. As hey, I Chris, mentioned, guys, you, everybody go follow Wes. You will not regret it. And uh, look for much more content coming from Mr. Wes Watson every damn day. This is the Chris Gethin podcast. Wes Watson, Chris Gethin, we is out. Thank you ever so much for listening. My name is Chris Gethin and I am out.